Hi everyone. Very good evening. I welcome you all for today's webinar, Custom Library Creation Inside Inventor. In this session, we are going to discuss how we can create a standard parts. Okay, how we can create a standard parts. How we can add the standard parts as a library inside Inventor. Okay. Also, we are going to see how we can customize our own components and make that one as a library and create that one inside our inventor okay so now overview we going to discuss in this webinar how we can go for new custom library one thing and next is how we can copy the standard library okay how we can copy the standard existing library and how we can add that to our own library so basically we will have standard content which is available in the inventor and next thing we can't able to edit that standard library so if you want to edit that standard library we need to copy that to our own uh, created one then on, there only we could able to edit so we're going to see how we can copy that existing or standard library to our own folders okay next we're going to see how we can add parts to the our own created library okay so we can customize so uh, we need any customized parts uh, which we, we will be using again and again so we're going to see how we can use that parts to our library so that it will reduce the task of creating that one again and again so this is what uh, we're going to discuss today right so what is this uh, library creation so in inventor we will call library as a content center so in which we will be having more than 750 components inside the inventor okay but most of these things will be available as a standard library meaning we can't able to edit the standard library so we will be having two kinds of library one is the read only library and next one we will be having like a read write library so in read only library we could not able to edit the standard components so we need to copy that standard library to our own created one then there only we could able to edit so we're going to see how we can convert the library from read only to read write library okay so these libraries can be installed locally in our system or we can share with the server or also we can share on a vault server okay so if we are working as a single user we could able to locate uh, ourselves to the ourselves to that library or if you are a multi-user we could able to share the uh, uh, library in a common workplace okay they also we can use the vault server next so we could able to you know customize these one only where part files are only allowed we could not able to do customization for our assembly files okay meaning we could we could able to bring our part files to our custom library we could not able to add the assembly files to our custom library but it's a, there is some work around even we can also able to convert the assemblies but uh, mostly preferred one is like only we could able to go with the part files okay next so before uh, creating uh, this components, you know, before sharing locally or uh, before creating anything, we need to configure the uh, library inside the inventor projects. But we are going to see how we are going to configure where we basically set uh, we where we will create a new library and where we will be giving our own library name and we will be giving the location and uh, so those kind of things we need to configure before creating a new uh, library. So once we create that so where we can add a custom content to the libraries okay so here important thing we need to notice like you will have two like two types of libraries one is the read only library next is the read write library okay so we are going to create a read write library that's a custom one okay so maybe a previous classes i think we have seen how we can uh, create a new project inside the 
inventor okay so once you get inside the project where we can see uh, in the project information so where we can see the configure content center right so this is where uh, so once you click that one this is where you will find your content center uh, library tab where all your standard you no know, read only library will be created okay. so let me show you that so let me get into inventor uh, that's my project here and you can see th this is my project information this is a list of projects that is available here so once you get into this project where we can see configure content center libraries here if you go these are the standard libraries that is available okay so you can find two things here one is the read only library so this is the standard one where uh, we could not able to edit these libraries you can see based on inventor and c din standard uh, iso standard or current for the sheet metal so they have basically given all the standards for the uh, for your designs okay so if you want to if you want to edit uh, these things what we can do is like we can copy this one to our own library so here you can see the libraries which is in print right that is created by our own okay so all these things are customized so these things and these standard things will be available in this location okay if you just go for this location of library so this is where our standard content will be available so let me click this link here you can see din standard as standard so based on different standard and we will be having our own libraries okay so even if you create any customized library it will be uh, listed out here okay so the extension for your library file is like dot id cl okay so that's my uh, that's my standard content but the location for my customized content so once you you know use the standard library the components which we pulling from standard components you no know, and it will be saved in the this location if, if you go to this folder option inside your project where you will have content center files okay so this is where your inventor pulls the standard component and it will save that standard component in this location okay so if you want to let's say for a mostly people who are working with a single user environment mostly it will be saved in this local drive okay see user uh content center first let's say if you want to include these one along with your project you can change this you change this location okay you can change the location and you can give wherever inside your project so that when you uh, move your project now when you want to take the same project and you want to share the project to other uh, users you can take all your content center files directly along with the project okay so that you don't face any uh, data uh, errors issue so there is another way okay uh, if you go to this tools tab where you can find this application option okay. so if you go here and uh, if we come here where we can see this content center library okay so this is the the same location now which i shown you okay so this is where your content center libraries are saved uh, if you are a shared user or if you're going to work with the uh, no, vault or a, a shared environment you can change this location and you can save this uh, content center library in a shared one okay in this uh, in the server so that it could be able to share by everyone okay so this is my custom library content where we basically give where my uh, library components once it pulls from my standard where it has to be saved okay there is, this is my location so if you want to change the location you have to go to this tools tab the tools you'll have application option 
and uh, here you will have content center and here you will use to change the location of your library where we have to save right so let me go to this project again here we can see you know, if you want to create a, any new project here you will have see the option if you want to create a new library okay and next if you want to you know uh, go for a shared environment if you want to go for the uh, shared environment with the vault uh, we, we will be using uh, this option library transfer data okay so if you have made it made it any changes and you want to update that you just go for update two okay so now let us create a one new uh, uh, uh new library so to create that we just go for create a library okay so here you can see I already created up many libraries but i'm not using it so so if i'm not using it what i will do is like i'm just uncheck this option okay so if you're going to use that you can directly check this option so that automatically these libraries you know the components which you added inside this library you could able to access once you get inside the center okay so now let us see how you can able to create a new library here so just go to this create library so once you go for a create library it will ask you give the display name as well as the file name okay so this display name is nothing but this is how your file will look when you open any uh, a new library so let me give this display name as a uh, so this library So once you click OK, and you can see that is my new test library. Okay, so now let us see inside whether it has been created or not. And let me click this location again. So when I click this one, you can see it has created something like test library dot id here. Okay, so this is my library location what we have given right now. Okay. So these are all my customized ones, right? So, so I'm going for one more library. That's my train library. Okay, so where I have already created some of the components. Okay, so we're going to see that one also. In any case, if you want to delete the created one, you can directly select that and you can go to delete the library. Okay, just you can delete that library. Okay, so what we have created, I've just deleted and if you want to see what are the properties that is available inside you can go and just check what is the name and uh, what type of library it is when it has been created so those things you can find here okay so now our library is basically a read write library okay here this one we could not able to change anything the standard one is a standard one we could not only the read only only okay we could not change this one but whereas if you go here this one so we could able to uh, no, even restrict the uh, uh, users no, not able to change these things okay, where we will have be having the controls also so let me click ok so if I, if you make any changes inside your uh, library and if you want to update you can go to okay. and if you want to uh, share this one with the uh, vault server we can also able to do that using this option so these are the options for your configure library inside your project okay. so now we have created a your one library uh, training library so now let me just check this option okay so i don't have any option right now i am having only the standard things has been checked so i'm just checking on in training library basically this is my custom library okay so let me click ok let me click done right so that's how you will create a new custom library okay so as i told you you will also have a read read library where we could be able to you know uh, create our own customized ones like how you have created 
so it's a uh, vault based on the vault configuration where we will be uh, creating a custom content center inside your vault uh, ADMS server. So once you get into this library, so this is how it will look like. So where you will be having all your standard uh, family names, like say curtain walls, fastness features. So inside the fastness, so what type of fastness? Maybe boldness. Again, if you get into the bold family, where you will have different families inside your bold. So okay, hexagonal like this. So once you again, if you get inside that form, inside that hexagonal and you will be having different types of hexagonal head bowls. Okay, so let us see that. So to check those things, we can go to this tool option where you will have in, in the content center, you can go to this editor. Okay. So if you go to this editor and you can see that's my library content center editor. Here we can see all your standard contents and see okay so it once you select that it will display all your ANSI based on the ANSI standards okay my uh, say hexagonal heads and if i get into hexagonal head these are my uh, standard contents okay see the difference no it is highlighted is like when you go for any standard content it's somewhat uh, no, uh, hidden like this, okay, where somewhere it has been shaded. Let's say if you have created any uh, customized one, what happens is like it will be, you know, uh, it will be get highlighted easily so that you could be able to differentiate the standard as well as your customized one. Okay, so let me show you. So instead of going for the standard one, I'm going for, I'm including everything. So when you go for this major to you, what it will do is like it will have all the components okay it will have all the standard from your ANSI to all the components it will include inside your uh, this library okay. see now the difference we can see the things which is you know which is in dark in color right that has been created on my own so that these are all customized Parts okay, so the things which is in hidden right this ANSI MC and uh, this roll steel, these are all standard uh, content that is available inside the inventor. So these things we could not able to uh, edit, we can only use these components. Okay, so if we want to edit these things, we need to copy these components, these components to our library, then only we could able to edit the configuration of this existing libraries okay so so that's what we're going to see uh, where we already created a training library okay so we're going to bring the components from different standard to the uh, training library so let's see how to do that so here i'm taking a simple example okay so we can see bolts we can see hexagonal head okay So that's my editor here so where it will contain all my standard components okay. and uh, so as i told you this is my standard tree where it will give you all your you know customized as well as standard components inside this category view and that's my main menu and uh, so we could able to easily differentiate between the standard as well as custom category okay. so for custom category where everything will be displayed inside my folder so the folder will look like this whereas my standard category will be look like as an icons which uh, which will give some image icons as a standard components okay so inside my so when i click any uh, standard component i will be also having the family table and which we got right so we're going to see okay so now let us let us bring how we can create that now let me get to assembly
see when I get into assembly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some components inside. Let's say I'm having some requirement. First, let us see how it will look when you goes when you get inside through this uh, assembly mode to bring the component that standard components inside to your to your inventor. You will go to assembly. So here you will have something called place from content center. Okay, so basically it's from base place from your library. Okay. So when you click this one, it will directly take you to your library. Here we could able to filter based on the standards. Okay, we can filter based on the ANSI or we can filter based on the ISO. Okay, or if you just uncheck this one, here it will give you all the standards right okay here let me go to one component let's say boots okay here i'm just going for hexagonal head so here it displays all the standards okay your ansi standard din standard iso standard and all the standards now i want to filter the bolt let's say ansi standard okay so when i filter this one you can see Many of the components has been reduced. Now it is showing only your ANSI components. Okay. Now what I need here is like I want to copy this bolt. Okay. Let's say heavy hexagonal bolt metric. Okay. So I want to copy this bolt into my training library that we have created. Okay. First, let me bring this component inside my library. See, when you bring this one, you can see it is giving you some information first based on selection. Next, it is giving on something called table view. Okay, so this table will contain all the parametric information for that particular bolt or particular part. Okay, so if you go to this table, it will give you what are all the sizes available for the that bolt. Okay, so these are all the sizes available for that. So starting from your 12 to again in this 12, you will have much more many configuration based on the different length 20, 25, 30, like this. And up to we have we have up to M36 here. Okay. So next you will also have family information where you will have basic description and know which standard it is and those kind of things you will have with this family information. Okay. So here again, if you come to this uh, initial one. Here you will have M12, M14, 16, M20 like this. Let's say, so why be going for this one, no? creating customized one? This is a standard one. In this standard, I have only up to M36. Let's say I have some requirement where I need to use the same bolt with M40. Okay, I want to use this one as a M40. But standard contents, what I am having is like I'm having only the M36. So how to customize these? Same bolt up to the to M40 sizes. Okay, so now we're going to see that how we can customize the same thing with the M40. Okay, right. So let us see that. And one more thing, when you take any uh, bolts, it will give you two options. Okay, one to use as a standard. When you use this one as a standard. So when we use this one as a standard, uh, sorry, you can see the symbol here. Okay, so this is my standard symbol. But when I uh, again let me go here and let me replace this one. So when I go for this custom, see what happens. When I go for custom, it directly asks you to save that component where you want to save so that we could able to directly save that component inside my uh, no project itself now you can see that icon symbol has been changed okay so we could so in this way we could also be able to save the you know components that you pulling from your library either you can save that one as a standard component or you can save that one as a custom one so custom is nothing but we could be able to save in the customized libraries okay right now we just see how we can make 
we can edit this one for m40 and how we can add that one into our training library okay so let me delete that so i'm going to say tools option let me go to editor here when i go to editor first let me show you my training library here so i'm just filtering out my training library okay and you can see i'm not and let me uncheck that one also okay so in my training library i created some folders here okay curtain walls and fasteners and features and there is some structural shapes okay so there are some folders i have created to create a new folder you can directly just click this one where it will ask you to create a category okay so let's say let me create a new category here uh, let me call that one as a nuts okay so here you can also uh, no, uh, link the parameters where you can view the standard parameters which is record for the nuts so like that also we can view once you just click okay and you can see nuts has been created inside my curtain mode, but i don't need these one okay so if you don't want just delete that category right so that's why you'll create a new category inside your uh content center editor okay so now let me come to this poster and you can see bolts and bolts i'm having the hexagonal head now we going to copy that you know whatever we seen previously we i'm going to copy that component so i'm just selecting the ANSI inventor ANSI and i'm getting inside my hexagonal head bolts and i'm going for uh, so this is the one right heavy hexagonal bolt right so i'm going to just go for copy two okay so here we can go for two things one i can right click and i can go for save copy as so once you go for save copy as so whatever may be the uh, libraries that custom libraries that you have added you could be able to copy this component this kind of components to the created libraries okay uh, once you copy that one you will have two options one either you can create that one as an independent family or you can link that one to parent family so your parent family is nothing but my bold okay we can link to this one to my parent family okay and the remaining you want to change any name those things we can add here so that's what your save copy as option but if you want to go for copy to option so it, where it will directly take you to that library just go to copy to go for training library so it directly copy the uh, necessary information to that training library okay yes now i'm going to this training library right now where we can see the highlighted ones so it's a little bit dark right so this one we have been copied from our ANSI standard okay so and one more thing you can you know you can see here there is some link icon right so which basically links the this item to my uh, standard ANSI content okay. so here if you want to rename that one or you want to move to some other library also we can able to move uh, if you don't want you want to suppress this link okay we can also able to suppress the link okay so here what we need to do is like as i told you we need to add the m41 we need to edit this table okay so let me go come to this family properties first let me show you what it contains this family properties this family is nothing but it is a bold family okay. so this family will contain the family names and it contains the parameter which is unique to the bolts and uh, so thumbnail views and there's a link between the family files okay so this is the family property okay where you will have nominal length diameter and all these things right so next let me go to this family table right this is my family table which contain sorry which contain all the necessary information okay, we can see it starts from m12 and it's an exit m 36 so this is where we need to add up m40 right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this row 
so either you can go for add row or you can delete that but these things we could not able to do with the standard content okay let me show you that once we create this one so i'm let me just copy this one and i'm going for insert copy row so what happens is like this one will be inserted in the new row okay and again i'm going for insert copy row and i'm going to add the three new rows or let's say I'm, let me add one more rows okay now let me change this one nominal diameter so instead of 36 i'm going to change that one as a 40 okay so in the i'm going to make another 40 i'm going to make another 40 and i'm going to make another 40 here okay now in this length i'm going to add different lengths okay different bold lengths one is for 100 and one is for 200 and one is for 300 and one is for let's say 400 okay Or I just change you everything as 100. Actually, I want to change the length of the board, but I change the thread length. Let me give 100. Okay, here let me come to this nominal length. So you can see the differentiation. Okay, this is nothing but my parameter where it is in red color. Okay, so which directly. Uh, contains the information from your standard bolt. So here I'm going to give some information. I'm going to give the SNSL, let's say 150 mm. And next is the 200 mm. And next let's say 300 and finally 400. Okay. So now what we did, see once I change this one, automatically what happens? Your designation will change M40. And uh, if we come here, automatically what happened? All these things link to remaining things, right? So that 40 link to your shank diameter and your thread diameter. And if you come here and you can see directly change it to M40 by 4 by 150. So everything will change. Right? So once you change this information here, automatically that will get updated to the across all the columns. Okay. So here we have changed the length for the 40. So basically we have four M40 combination with different length of Different, uh, different length bolts. Okay, so that's it. And let me click apply. So it's telling me publish successfully to the selected library. Now click OK and OK. Now we just get inside the environment and let us check. So I'm going to assembly. Here we can see uh, this option. Okay, place from content center. So now that's my bolt, right? This may be hexagonal bolt. So it's directly uh, highlights the edited one. So I'm this is my hexagonal. It I'm going to heavy X bolt metric. Let me check that. See, once you select automatically, you can see we have M40. Okay, so in this M40, so whatever length that we have created, 150, 300, and 400, so that's my standard one. Okay, so like this, we could able to customize even if you want M42 or M50, or let's say in this one, you want the same bolt with the M10, we could also able to customize this. Okay, let's say in M30, if you want a different length, okay, you want a 400, or you want with the uh, you know, 50 length, like that also we could able to customize inside my table okay or we can directly customize inside my normal length okay now let us bring this one inside so now let me go to as standard and let me bring this m40 let's say this 400 and let me click ok right so that's my nominal length 
so this thread length i have just given 100 so if you have made that minus 300 and 400 your thread length has been increased okay so in that way we could able to customize the uh, standard that way we can customize the standard library and we can uh, bring that one to the uh, created one and where we can set our own values okay so now in the next one we just go and create our own uh, pots and we will just see how to bring that one to our library okay now we just saw how we can copy the standard one okay or we can copy the standard one now we can bring that standard one to a created training library okay or customized library now we just see how to create a component how to bring the created components to your library okay so now just let us see that uh, so here i already created one like uh, one component So I already created one T section. So we just let me show you what I created. So this T section is consists of these parameters. Okay. So you can see that is my parameter. Width is my parameter. And here my thickness is one of my parameter. Width and thickness is my parameter. Okay. And uh, this is my width. So whatever changes that I made here, automatically my width will be increased. So basically this is my T section. So I went for the standard 100 by 100 size and with the thickness 10 by 10. Okay. And uh, here also I have given one more parameter. My length. Okay, you can see my length is equal to 100. Okay. So if you want to check those parameters you can go to this manage tab and go to fx here you can see the parameters my width my thickness radius and my length okay so why i created this parameter because i want to export all these parameters to my library okay so where i can i could easily select so what type of you no know, based on what type of parameter i have to choose the components and here and uh, i'm going to export these created parameters let me select this thick and i'm going to make that one as a key parameters and also i want that one to export to libraries I'll click done now yes we're going to do one more thing okay so we're going to create as a ipod so what basically ipod will just like it create a many configuration of the same pot where we don't need to create you no know, different dimensions so i'm just going to create a ipod so you can see once you the ipod that's my information right with thick length that's my pot and that's my future so in my future all these are my necessary parameters okay so now what we're going to do is like i want the combination of this T section okay. here i'm going for three combinations okay. so first combination i want with let me go with one more combination so i want with 200 and next one i want with 300 and next one i want with 400 okay. and the length i want with the same thing 200 300 for it okay and uh, we not change this thickness right let me change that one to 20 30 oh let us give this one 35 that is one we can change to four six eight Okay. so this radius is nothing but my fillet radius here okay and uh, so these are my re remaining properties and if you want to know this uh, physical information and these things if you want to map also we could able to map uh, those information we can bring inside
so now just i'm going for ipod author and let me click okay so once i click this one you can see it already created here my ipod now let me check this option where we will have four combinations that's my t section two you can see and that's my three and that's my four okay let me check this one where we have given 400 right so You can see that's my 400 length okay so the reason that we have created this one is like we we want to include this component into my uh standard uh, my customized library because let's say if you have any requirement where you are using this component frequently again and again so you don't need to create this one individually or you can also you don't need to know you don't need to open each and every time so we what we can do is like we can able to save this file inside my customized library and I can use it a number of times. Okay. Now to get to to take this to my library, to you can go to this manage tab inside your pot where you will have something called publish pot. Okay. So go to this publish pot. So once you get into this one, here it will ask you library. Okay. So I'm just choosing this training library here and go for next option right so once you get into this training library where we can enter inside my respected folders okay with, with a record folder so i'm just going for structural shapes and i'm going to inside channels i'm going to custom category okay so i want this component to place inside this folder this custom category with this structural shape and let me go for next and you can see it is asking me to map some of these parameters okay all these parameters and you can see you no know, this is unique to this structural shape so this are unique to my structural shape okay so i'm going to base length and i'm just choosing my length here so what happens is like the length of my T section will be automatically linked to the length of my created library or length. Okay. So let me go to next. So here we can map the uh, parameters. So I'm going for let's say thickness and I want my width. Okay, let me take member also. So if you want to map the material also, we can map. Now for this, this this information is okay. So let me go for next. So here you can enter your family name, family description like this, and also you can give your standard. And if you have any own standard, also you can give your own standards okay. like this. You can also specify the manufacturer information. For example, uh, like that. If you have any specific manufacturer, you can also enter your manufacturer information. So with this, I'm just going for next. Uh, given the family name as a T section go for next so that's my thumbnail image which auto automatically captured from the inventor and go for publish yes so it published completely right so we have, uh, we have published that one successfully right now let's check that let me go to assembly again so let me go to place from library that is based from content center let me search this option now so where we have placed that one we have placed inside my structural shape right so basically uh, this thing will give you no entire uh, because i've not checked anything right so what it will do is like whatever the libraries which is inside the content center it will display all the components okay you display all your ANSI, BSA, and all the, also the custom library that you have created. So everything will be displayed here. Okay. So this is a structural shape where for the training library we have channels and where we have placed inside my custom category. Okay. This is where we have placed our T section here. So let me check this T section and let me click OK. And you can see. So that's me. 
information okay so this is my table view so you have one two three four like this okay and also you have family information and you can see our selections see when i just go for radius 2 my width is 100 and my thickness is 10 that's my pot number and when i go for radius 2 that's my uh, different width and thickness and my length let me go for six and my eight okay so here i've deliberately given based on my radius okay? even you can also give based on your pot number or you can give based on your length also okay so once we give no once we exported the component where i just made the radius as my first parameter so that's why i'm getting like this okay so again you can make this one as a custom one or you can make this one as a standard one so i'm going for standard so let us place this one that's my two let me click OK. The first component, right? So now let me change the size. So let me place this one again. Now let us go for this one, okay. And that's my another component. Okay. So all these are my standard components. Let me place this one. Right? So like that, we can also able to bring our custom components we can create a pot file so we can also we could able to uh, bring take that pot file no? we can customize the size we can take the pot file to our library also so that we can able to use that one n number of times okay so that is what you were uh, you know, bringing the pot file to your custom library okay so we have seen how we can create a custom library and then we have seen how we can move the components uh, from the how we can move the components from standard components to the customized one to our uh, customized one and also we have seen how we can edit the custom uh, customized one okay how we can configure on based on own settings we have made m40 right and uh, and finally we also saw how we can create a component using pot, pot using ipod and uh, and we took that one to our own customized libraries okay so this is what we plan for today's session and i hope uh, uh, this is clear so if you have any doubts you can leave that you can leave your queries in the comment session okay so that's for that is what for today and uh, we will meet in next session thank you